Hi everyone, Green Orb here. Today I want to talk about golf. Golf has to be one of the most arcane and impenetrable sports ever invented. It's at least on the same level as cricket in terms of bizarre lingo, unusual origins, and the level of devotion it inspires in its players and fans. Have you ever tried to understand what a friend or significant other is talking about when they're talking about golf? Are you maybe interested in getting into the game, but want a primer on the language it uses? Are you an occasional player who's heard terms at golf days, but isn't too sure what they really mean? If you fall in any of these categories, this is going to be the video series for you. In each video, I'll be taking you through the very basics of the terminology of the game and how it's played. Obviously, I can't get out onto the course at the moment to make a video demonstrating the concepts I'll be talking about. So instead, I'm going to be combining my love for computer games and golf by using the Golf Club 2 to demonstrate much of what I'm talking about. The Golf Club 2 is a really good golfing simulator and gives you the uncommon opportunity to combine the impossible to perfect game of golf, the almost unendurable frustration of the game, the intense swearing you'd normally only get on the course, and the level of physical immobility only gamers and office workers generally get to experience. All in one single package. I do digress though. On to who can play golf, how it's administered, where you can play it, and the features of most golf holes. Anyone can play golf, even those with disabilities. It's one of the very few games played competitively by men and women from ages as young as five, well into their 80s and 90s. Basically, as long as you can still swing the club and hit the ball, you can still play the game. There are two ruling authorities on golf in the world, the RNA and the United States Golf Association, otherwise known as the USGA. The RNA are the ruling authority on the game across the whole world, except for the United States and Mexico. The USGA is the ruling authority on golf in the United States and Mexico. There is one exception to this. Canada likes to be friends with everyone, so they've added the RNA rules to the USGA rules to both keep everyone happy and confuse golfers the world over. The basic purpose of the game is to hit the golf ball with the golf club as few times as possible to get it into the hole, also called a cup. The scoring of these hits and who actually wins a game of golf can get incredibly complicated, so I'm going to leave that for the next video in the series. On most normal days, you'd play golf on a golf course. These days, if you're lucky, you have a backyard and a hitting net. If you're really unlucky, you're explaining to your significant other why there's a golf ball shaped hole in the ceiling of your lounge. Again, I digress. Golf courses are basically nice large parks with various types of grass, undergrowth, sandy spots and water features. You get several varieties of golf courses based on the environment they're in and the ownership and management model they operate under. Some courses are reserved for members and guests of members exclusively whilst others are open to any member of the public. Some golf courses are a combination of both. Most golf courses have 18 holes, although some of the shorter golf courses have just nine. This golf course you're seeing on screen now is the Houghton Lakes Golf Course, and it's a Parklands type golf course with 18 holes and a total length of around 7,000 yards. Now, irrespective of whether the golf course has 18 or 9 holes, there will be a few common features to almost every golf course. Every golfer will start each hole on a flat, closely mown section of grass called a tee, or a tee box. I've highlighted it in blue on the screenshot here. Each hole varies in length, anywhere from 70 to 80 meters, that's 80 to 90 yards, out to over 450 meters, approximately 500 yards. Depending on the length of hole in meters, or yards if you prefer imperial measurements, the golfer will either try to hit the, the ball to another closely mown area of grass called the fairway, highlighted in yellow, or to an even more closely mown area of grass called the green, highlighted in orange, because I like to confuse people. The fairway and green will often be shaped to fit in with the landscape around them, so you'll almost never find a perfectly flat fairway or green. Remember earlier how I mentioned that the goal of the game is to get the ball into the hole, or cup? Well, the hole is located somewhere on the green. 
The hole is exactly 10.795 centimeters or 4.25 inches in diameter, which is really a pretty small target, irrespective of how long the hole might be. The cup is often moved around the green, sometimes as often as once a day by the groundskeepers, just to keep things interesting for the players. There is something called a flag, or a pin alternatively, that is stuck in this hole so that golfers know where to aim for on the green. It is quite literally a tall pole with a flag at the top. Now there are some areas of grass on every hole that aren't closely mown. These areas of grass are called the rough. Golf courses usually have thick brush or trees in the rough. You might have overheard mention on TV or the radio of the first cut or second cut of rough. It's really not critical to know the difference between the two of these, but basically they just denote longer and longer lengths of grass relative to the grass on the fairway. I've highlighted the rough on this hole in black. Virtually every hole will also have something called bunkers. These are also sometimes called sand traps or traps. They're basically large holes dug out of the terrain and filled with soft sand and they're usually placed in areas where golfers will often hit the golf ball. I've highlighted the bunkers in red on this particular screenshot. Finally, many golf holes will have an element of water on them. These could be in the form of a pond, or a dam, or a river, or a creek. On this screenshot, I've highlighted the water feature in grey. Okay, that about covers the basics of the environment golf is played in. Tomorrow's video is going to cover the actual playing of the game the equipment, the names of the shots you hit in the game, and how the scoring works. If you do have any questions around the basics of the environment golf is played in, please just leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching.